In this video, I'm going to go through looking at the projection operator and using this idea that as long as you consider all of your basis vectors and you use this relationship where you have the ket and then the bra or an outer product, that summing those up should give you the identity matrix. So let's now do this working in the z basis for actually our spin in x. So these are still going to be orthogonal states. They still span the space. So if we worked in the x basis, it would look identical to the work we've done with z. They would just be 1, 0, 0, 1. But so let's try to work with this in the z basis and see if this still holds. We can do this either in the bra cat notation or we can do it in the matrix notation. And I'll start with matrix notation. So when we see this, we know that we also have to get the bra forms. And which side the subscript goes on doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm putting it with the, the angly bit, but it doesn't, it isn't that important. So to convert this to our, our bra, this one is still just like that. And to convert this one to our bra, it's that, so it should be a minus sign. Um, not too hard. Again, and remember that going from cat to bra, you need to transpose and take the complex conjugate since these values are our real, um, the values are identical. So now let's go through and do this multiplication and check and see what we get. So the first thing is going to be, and I'll do this in, in just pieces. So just this first piece is going to be one over square root of two from the first one and then one over square root of two from the second one. I like pulling those out. So that first one is here is going to be one, one. That second one here is one, one. So one over square root of two, one over square root of two just gives me one over two. And now row, column, row, column, one, one, row, column, row, column, one, one. That's what that first term gives me. The second term, we'll see what that one gives me. Again, I have two factors of one over square root of two don't forget about those. And now that first one is one negative one. That second one is over here, one negative one. So when I multiply those out, I again have one over uh, two. And now one times one is one. One times negative one is negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times negative one is one. So now we have to add these together. So when I add these together, um, and I'm going to do this, um, I'll actually distribute this in first. Uh, you might be able to just do this in one step in your head, that's up to you. So this first one, I have one half, and then here I have plus one half. The second element, I have one half, but now I have minus one half. Down here, I have, the first one is one half, and then minus one half from this second matrix. Then over here, one half plus one half. And so, these become zero, these become one, and we're left with our identity matrix having one on the diagonals, zero off. So this checks out, right? So notice I actually started with my states expressed in the z basis, though they were my x states, and we still got the identity matrix in the z basis. So we could also actually replicate this in, in the um, bracket notation by expanding each of these into actually being expressed as the Z um, bras and cats. And what I mean by that is just taking, for instance, spin up in X and saying that's one over square root of two, and then spin up in Z plus spin down in Z. So you can actually take this form, plug them in here, so you actually have two terms here, two terms here, two terms here, two terms here, there. It gets kind of messy, but then when you go through, and you distribute everything out and actually multiply out, again, making sure you're never flipping the order of bras and cats, you actually get back to something that is clearly going to be equal to your identity matrix or basically equal back to um, expressing this in terms of the Z basis. So this is going to be a really helpful tool and one of the ways that it helps you is by really letting you um, mess around with the, the bases a little bit. And the reason for that is, as you probably know, I can always say if A, for instance, is just a scalar, I can always say that that's equal to one times A, where that one is a scalar. Now, I could also say if A is a matrix, that A matrix is equal to one scalar times the matrix. Okay, fine. Now, what's cool 
is that we can say any quantum state is equal to, well, just 1 times that quantum state. Fine, again, just scalar 1. What's helpful is we can say any quantum state is equal to the identity matrix times that quantum state. And we can then express it this way, and that allows us to start playing games and seeing probabilities in different directions um, pretty easily. So this is a uh, relationship that you will need to use fairly often for certain calculations and derivations. And the idea is you can then just take this identity matrix, ones on the diagonals, and you can express it as your projection, your sum of your projection operators in whatever direction you want, x, y, z, arbitrary direction, and you can do that either in that Brockett notation or that matrix notation. So um, get some practice with this and just think about what we're doing. And this is where there's that distinction between the vector itself and then the basis that we express that vector in, or that state, and how we're choosing to express that state. So psi here is just some state, and that has some meaning, but then we can choose different bases to express it in, and this allows us to do that in a nice way.